guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is April and today is a new video in the core concept series for med surge nurses. Now this of course is a great series if you are in fundamentals, but this is a really nice refresher series if you're especially in your first med surge course, but even if you're in a complex adult health course or nearing graduation and taking NCLEX and you just want to refresh on some core concepts. Now, this is a back to the basic series in which we are really just trying to understand what is happening inside the body so that we can better assess, manage, and care for clients with acute and chronic condition. Okay, so today's video is going to be on cellular regulation, and the definition of cellular regulation is the genetic and physiologic processes that control cellular growth, replication, differentiation, and function to maintain homeostasis. There are three definitions that we need to understand in order to discuss cellular regulation. The first is cellular growth, and that's where we have division and then continued growth of the original cell in our body. Cellular replication is where a copy is made of a specific cell. And then cellular differentiation is the process of a cell becoming much more specialized in order to accomplish a very specific task. There are two interrelated concepts, and that is going to be immunity and pain. Now, immunity we have not yet discussed in our core concept series, but we will be very soon. And pain, of course, we have already discussed. Um, if you missed that video or if you watched it and you want to refresh, I will have a link in the description box below. Now, of course, much like all of the core concepts that we've discussed so far in this series, cellular regulation can either be normal or it can be impaired. Now, impaired cellular regulation is where we have excessive or abnormal growth of tissues that are not needed for body function. So for some examples would be benign and malignant tumors. So malignant tumors being cancerous tumors. Maybe you have fibrosis or excessive scar tissue formation. All of that is impaired cellular regulation. Now, impaired cellular regulation can also reduce cell production. So for example, insulin. So your clients that are type 1 and type 2 diabetics in which in a type 1, they don't have any production of insulin. And in a type 2, they have a reduced production of insulin. That is impaired cellular regulation. We can also have clotting issues in which our clotting factors are impaired. So that is also cellular regulation. Now, risk factors for cellular regulation or impaired cellular regulation will be aging. So especially over the age of 55, we can see problems with cellular regulation inside the human body, but definitely when we get over age 70, our risk factors are significant. Smoking, of course, impairs our ability of our cells to regulate themselves in a normal you know, way to maintain homeostasis. Poor nutrition is another really big component of cellular regulation. Physical inactivity, exposure to environmental pollutants, of course, radiation. There are some medications that impair cellular regulation, such as chemotherapy and genetic predisposition. Now, the physiologic consequences of impaired cellular regulation are those benign or malignant growths. So, of course, a benign tumor is an excessive growth of cells, but those cells are going to mirror the original cell and they will not spread to other tissues and body organs. And that's important to remember. However, a malignant or a cancerous growth is growth of cells that have no comparison to the original cell and they can invade healthy cells, tissues and organs. And that would be called, of course, metastasis. As far as assessment, of course, we need a good health history, both on our client and on the family. From a physical examination standpoint, we want to be able to palpate any masses. Uh, we want to assess for pain in various parts of the body. And then, of course, is your client having difficulty breathing, which could uh, mean that you have some kind of a malignant or a benign growth of the chest or in the lung. Now to completely diagnose uh, a benign or malignant growth, we use CAT scans or MRIs. Those help us identify locations of tumors. We can use endoscopy as well to visualize tumors and to also take tissue biopsies. And we, once we have that tissue biopsy, we can send it off to our lab for cell cytology, which will help us grade and stage tumors. Now, from a health promotion perspective, we're going to talk a little bit about primary prevention and secondary prevention. So think to back to any health and wellness class that maybe you've had. So primary prevention is where we are trying to minimize the risk of developing, in this case, impaired cellular regulation. So some great examples of primary prevention would be sunscreen. That's going to help prevent skin cancer. 
Smoking cessation will help prevent lung, oral, and bladder cancer. Diets that are low in saturated fat and high in fiber help to prevent breast and colon cancer. An increase in physical activity and avoiding environmental hazards will help to prevent all types of cancers. And then as we move into secondary prevention, this is just regular screening so that we can early identify and diagnose a problem. Remember that for clients that have cancer in particular, the earlier the diagnosis, the better risk of or the better chance of survival. So some secondary prevention strategies might be um, mammograms and colonoscopies and PET scans, things of that nature. And then as far as interventions, now interventions for cellular impaired cellular regulation are going to depend on the type and severity of the impairment. So we might see surgery to debulk a tumor, radiation and chemotherapy to shrink tumors, hormonal therapy, which we often sometimes see in breast cancer, targeted therapies, biologic therapies, and then of course, bone marrow or stem cell transplants. Okay, guys, so that's all I have for you related to cellular regulation. Hopefully you found this helpful as a core concept. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. And if you would like to reach out to me, I am available on multiple social media platforms, as well as you can certainly email me. Now, don't forget to reach out uh, to my, and take a look at my Etsy shop. I do have uh, case studies and study guides that go along with every video in the core concept series. And if you've been holding off on purchasing a product because you were waiting on a discount code, well, I have it for you today. If you would like a 10% discount on any product in my Etsy shop, you can use the code PROFRN10, P-R-O-F-R-N-10, and I will pop that up on the screen as well. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next core concepts video.